I'm about to show you code so slick that even your grandma would give it a thumbs up. Welcome all. Today you're going to learn how to animate font palettes using only CSS. Want to see what it looks like? It's sick. And guess what? It's actually very easy to do. With Chrome version 121, you can animate different color palettes of different fonts. And because we're on Chrome version 127 right now, this is supported across all the browsers. So you can definitely do this yourself. I made a simple HTML and CSS website that you can see. Now imagine that this is your homepage and you want to make it look fancy and nice and professional and animated. Well, you want to put a piece of text on the screen, but this doesn't do you justice. This just quite frankly looks a little bit shit. So you want to make it look much better. You can do, and you can write a bunch of JavaScript, but you don't want to write JavaScript. You want to do it with pure CSS and only a few lines of code. Well, here is how you do it. Some fonts now available on the market have the properties of being able to handle different color palettes. And they might already have color palettes that are two-tone, three-tone, four-tone, already assigned to them that you can switch between and manage the color in that sort of way. However, those colors might not always be something that you might like. So there is a possibility to override these colors and then make, for example, animations where you're transitioning between them for that actual piece of text or more precisely the actual fonts that you're using now you might be like whoa philip well my god uh, how do i uh, get this font and how do i work with this and how the hell do i know if it has the availability to do a two-tone or three-tone or four-tone or five-tone or six-tone color palette well here is where a very cool and slick website called wakamai font do comes in which allows you to essentially drag a font into the website and then it shows you all the properties of that font. And one of those properties that it shows you, if it has any color palettes, how many tones it is, what color palettes you can translate between, but remember that you can always override those. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Now this everybody is the Wakamai Fondue website. And this is where you can get all the information about the fonts that you're using. Now, if I just bring up my finder, you'll notice that I have five different fonts over here and you'll see that there is a variation of them uh, and that some are colorful and some are not. Now, if I just drag a very basic font like Vogue into Wakamai Fondue, what you'll notice is that it gives you a very basic summary of the font. It gives you an example of what it looks like and a whole character set. And that's basically all the information you get. But what if we work with a slightly more complex font? In this case, I'm going to drag something like Bungie Spice in. Now, Bungie Spice is a lot more complicated. It has much more properties. And what you'll notice is that apart from the things that we saw previously, it also has this color section. And this font specifically has a free color palette with two specific tones that it applies. A red and a yellow, a dark blue and a light blue, and a dark green and a lime green. And that's the kind of fonts and palettes that you can work with here and apply them to that type of font. Now, what if we go with an even more complicated font? Well, in this case, I'm going to drag a font like Nabla in. And Nabla is very, very interesting because it has a very, very large color palette. It actually has seven color palettes of a maximum of 10 different colors. Or actually maybe all of them are 10, it's just these last ones here might just be white. Now the question coming from you is probably, well, how do I apply these to my actual fonts? Well, let me show you. We have this very basic website and I want to make this a color palette animation text much more exciting. Well, in my uh, code, I have a very basic HTML file where I have this container, which I have quirky text inside. And that's the class I have given to this specific font. It's called quirky text. So that's how I can target it in my CSS. Now I can target quirky text by placing a dot for a class, quirky dash text. And inside here, I'll give it a font a size of like 180 pixels. Uh, and I'll apply the same uh, font here. So font family will be a Nabla with a security redirection to sans serif. Now, if we go back to the page, this is what it looks like. Well, it applied the specific 
uh, font, but it also applied the most basic color palette. Because if we actually go back to the colors, the initial color palette is all of these yellows and oranges. Now these color palettes, because they're programmatic, uh, they start from an index of zero. This is how you can label them. And then you can selectively pick from them based on the index. Now, the only way you can change a color palette in CSS is by applying a specific function within CSS. That function is called font palette values. So let's implement it. Right here, I'm going to do an add for a function, font palette values, and then you call the function something with a double dash. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do test. And inside this function, we uh, also tell uh, the browser that we want the font family to be Nabla, but in this case, we just write Nabla in itself rather than in the quotes. And then we also pick a base palette. Now the base palette in this case is zero, but if maybe I want to change the palette to something like, uh, let's say the blue one, so index wise, it will be zero, one, two. So if I go back to that, I'll type uh, two. And then in my quirky text, I will add a font palette that we're going to be using and I'll reference this specific function definition, which is test. And now if we go back to our browser and we go back to the quirky thumbnail, you'll notice that the color changed to that specific uh, color palette. If we maybe want to pick this specific color palette with the greens, it will be zero, one, two, three, four, five. And in this case, I go back to the code. I change the base palette to five that already applies within the quirky text. And if I go back here to the quirky thumbnail website, you'll notice uh, that that palette now changes. And this is how you work with the different color palettes that are already available to you. But how do we customize them and how do we animate between them? Creating a user experience like that is super fun. I mean, it's super fun. You're working with something that's in general very simple to do once you know how to do it and very fast to do once you know how to do it. And the results are really impressive. Dude, I just want to stress how important the right UI is for user interest, user retention, and ultimately a great user experience. Now, it's about finding a balance. You shouldn't overdo it, but a user should feel delighted to spend time on your website. That's the whole premise of it. Like with user experience, you should also consider other things, like a user's compliance, right? I know this is a tedious subject, especially when all you want to do is focus on building your website. It's one of those things you'd rather leave to the experts and not do it yourself. But here's the deal, and this is very important. Getting user consent right isn't just about staying out of legal trouble, and you don't want that. It's about building trust with your users. That's what's important. The more trust and flexibility you give to a user, ultimately, the more delighted they're going to be. So using something like CookieBot makes this a whole lot easier. It ensures your site ticks all the boxes for global data privacy laws, uh, which means you can dodge those future legal headaches. Now I'm doing this lecture and pointing this out because this is actually really important stuff most developers forget about or often get wrong. We build these beautiful websites, but as web developers, we also need to make sure we're handling user consent and data privacy right. It's just one of those things that needs to be done. Now, CookieBot CMP is super flexible, which I love, by the way, letting you customize the consent process so it aligns with your brand and what your users need. And trust me, I like when a tool is flexible with its customization. Now, the actual implementation of CookieBot inside your application is extremely straightforward. Once you select what type of pop-up you want, it's all about just copying the script that has been generated for you, pasting it into your application, and everything just works perfectly out of the box. So as soon as a new user visits your website, they're going to be presented with this pop-up. A fun fact for you, it takes 0.9 of a second for a user to scan a website and form an opinion. How crazy is that? That's quick, that's super quick. So I hope you take this into account. And if you need to handle legal easily on your website, go check out CookieBot in the description. Now let's make this landing page that we're building nice enough so that someone actually forms a good opinion in 0.9 seconds and stays on the page. <laughs> now going back to our website, what happens when I want to animate a transition between the different color palettes? Well, it's actually very simple to do. We just essentially need to duplicate this font palette values function right here. Uh, and I'll call this one, I'll change the name of the first one to initial, and then I'll call the second one secondary, for example. And here we're going from a basic base palette to the base palette of two, which is the blue one that we saw previously. And then in quirky text, I'm going to have a declaration for font palette, which is going to be the initial one. And then for quirky uh, text on hover, so whenever I hover over the specific font, I'm going to change the font palette uh, to be 
secondary. And now we actually need to create the transition so it's nice and smooth. So in this quirky text, we can create a transition, uh, which is going to be something like ease 250 milliseconds on a font palette. And now if we go back into the website, as soon as I'm on the website and I hover over the font, you can see it actually change and animate to the different color palette which is amazing, it looks great. It already uh, makes the website come alive much, much more. But what if we want to override the specific values of this color palette to make sure that maybe in this yellow, only specific parts of the text change. Now I found this very cool example online of a code pen of another person creating and animating uh, the font palette. So if we just go onto code pen, this is by Mandy Michael. So uh, all props goes to Mandy Michael. And as soon as I hover over it, you'll notice that this palette actually animates. And you can see that animation, that transition is much smoother. And it's because he has overwritten uh, those specific colors to his custom ones and put them in the same color scheme so it looks seamless. So essentially what you do is create two of these functions, a font palette value function in which he called effect and a font pan value function, which he called transition. He applied the font family of bungee spice, which we have actually seen previously. This is the actual font that has three different color palettes. And here he used the function called the override colors. And uh, he specified an index of zero and one to change the specific colors. Now, if I go to what can my font do? And if I drag my bungee spice text into here, and if we navigate to colors, you'll notice that here we have the two different colors that we can target. And obviously we can target a specific color palette by specifying the index of zero, one and two when we're defining the base palette, but we can also override each specific individual color by also targeting the index of zero and one, zero and one, zero and one. And that's exactly what has happened here. We are overriding the colors of zero and overriding the colors of one to make this smooth animation. Now, a cool trick with this is that the last color in your previous function becomes the first color in your next function. So then the animation is actually very seamless and those colors remain the same. So it looks like the color is shifting down. And of course, he also did the same thing where he has the H1 tag defined. And here he's doing the transition, same like we did. He's selecting the font palette and he's also doing an on hover animation where he's just changing to the different function to offer that transition. And that's essentially it. That's essentially how you animate font palettes. Now, of course, if you wanted to override the colors of the previous Nabla font we had, well, you'd have to define each specific color on its own. So you'd have to override 10 different colors and then override and transition to 10 different colors again, which requires a little bit more work, maybe a much more defined color palette that you want to use. So this is a nicer example with a much simpler color scheme to showcase. Now guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something new and I hope that you find CSS and cool web design fun. If you do, let me know in the comments. Make sure you like this video and as always, I'll see you in the next one.